Hello, my name is Piotr Pot. I'm a postdoctoral researcher here at the Center of Quantum Nanoscience in South Korea. And this is uh, the ESR SDM that I'm working on called ALICE. So the reason why we call this SDM ALICE is based off of literature uh, focused on quantum information science and quantum computing where quite often you have entanglement between different states or qubits. These qubits in literature are usually named Alice, Bob, or Charlie. And because this is the first SDM that was set QNS, and we named them alphabetically, the name of this SDM is Alice. The thing that I think makes Alice special is the um, samples and the structures that we make actually in this SDM. So many other SDMs here at QNS focus on physics of single molecules or single atoms. ALICE is one of the few SDMs here where we actually put together different atoms and see how they behave together and how they interact. For example, one of the structures that we make is one iron and one titanium atom. And we found that this can behave quite like a qubit in a quantum computer. And we actually showed that you can use these atoms as a rudimentary quantum computer and a paper that was published in Science at the end of last year. The lowest temperature and the temperature we actually uh, do our experiments at is at around 350 millikelvin, so very, very close to absolute zero. So I think one of the biggest differences between ALICE and the other SDMs here at QNS is that this is a commercially built SDM. Um, and the reason why this is commercially built is because this is the first SDM that came to QNS and they wanted to start really quickly, right? Building an SDM takes years, but when QNS was first starting up, they wanted results as fast as possible, so they built, bought this commercial SDM. So I think the most important part of this SDM is the stability. Quite often, and in many SDMs, uh, you don't have a very stable system. And what I mean by that is that from day to day, you might come and for example, your sample is ruined or the tip that you use to measure your system is ruined. In this case here, this system is very, very stable. And that's important because every day we create a structure and we need several weeks to study that structure. If we came back after let's say a week and the structure was gone, this would really prevent us from doing the research that we wanna do. So yeah, I did mention stability and I think I personally haven't heard of any other SDM that has been able to do this. We've managed to keep the same sample in this SDM for about three years. Just to give you guys an idea of how long most samples last in an SDM, two months to three months is usually your longest time that you have a sample. Furthermore, I think also the amount of time that we can keep the same tip is quite special. Tips generally change day by day. In this machine, we've managed to keep a tip for one month or so. I think the most interesting sample that we've worked on is titanium and iron deposited on magnesium oxide. The reason why I think this is the most interesting sample that we've worked on is essentially this has allowed us to create different structures on the magnesium oxide by either moving around the titanium or the iron and using these different structures we can study different types of physics. For example, quantum computations or quantum interferometry, so on and so forth. So I would say about three to four people work on a project, right? But there's maybe eight to 10 people in the group itself. So you can imagine that the group itself, these eight people, we discuss the ideas between each other and we switch projects. And when one project is happening, three to four of those people from the eight person group is actually doing the experimental tasks. I think actually making structures is one of my favorite things to do in this SDM. So, uh, it's quite painstaking. Once you, uh, once you make your structure and you measure something that's not really very expected or something new, then it's really, really exciting, right? But it's also, you know, as a child, you play with Legos and you build stuff around. Here, this is the smallest form of Lego you can have. You know, you're moving around atoms. You see when they're closer or further apart, they do something different. And you can really play around and do something called atomic scale or quantum engineering. <laughs> 